Hello, it's Dr. Jenkins. We're here for the Heat Content of Food Labs. It actually burns out on itself. Today in lab, we're going to be burning up some food. I'm a little bit sad that you don't have the chance to do this in lab, but not to worry. At La Casa de Dr. Jenkins, we have the setup right here for you. Okay? We're going to be burning a piece of popcorn, a potato chip, and a peanut. As we know, Calories are a unit of heat, so we're going to measure how much heat comes off of each food, do a calculation, and that'll tell us an estimate of how many calories are in each food. Before we started this, we did, I'll come to you, don't you worry, we did some, hey there, we did some hypotheses, right? So I asked my trusty assistant, I asked her, which of the three foods she thought would contain the most calories? She thought potato chip. You think what you think will contain the most calories, the chip, popcorn, or peanut. Also, I'd like you to make a hypothesis for which piece of food will contain the least amount. My trusty assistant thought it was the popcorn. Do you think she's right? We're going to find out. All right. Before we begin this, we're going to be going right from the instructions in the lab book. We're going to be weighing each food sample on a trusty scale. And you know Dr. Jenkins has a food scale at her house. She sure does. We're going to take a baseline weight of each of our foods. I've put together the same table that's in your lab book. Because from these numbers, you're going to do the calculations. I put this on the scale. I press zero to tear it. We're gonna put on, the, that's not gonna work. We're gonna put on the popcorn, 0.22 grams. So I'm gonna write in the initial popcorn weight, 0.22 grams. Potato chip. Again, I'm gonna zero it. Potato chip, 0.41 grams. Potato chip, 0.41 grams. Isn't it fun to do science? I tell you. In what other lab are they going to be burning up food? Not any of the cool ones. Now we'll do the peanut. 0.53 grams. So we have the initial food weights. After we burn the food, we're going to weigh them again to get the final weights, and then we're going to take the difference. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to be creating our homemade calorimeter. Now in this lab, we're also going to be talking about the bomb calorimeter, which is the most accurate way to measure calories. But that costs about $10,000. Not too many people have that. I mean, we do, but not too many people have it. But we can also do a homemade one, all right? To do that, we have a big, like, Folgers coffee can. We have a smaller tomato paste can. Here we go. We have our little foil piece with a wire coming out the top. Let's do the popcorn first. So I'm going to arrange the wire. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to arrange the wire so it will cradle the piece of popcorn. Oh, I'm excited. We're going to put this right down. Now I've already weighed it, okay? We're going to put this can over top. Dangling over top of this, we're going to take a small tomato paste can with 100 mils of warm water. Dr. Jenkins also has a beaker at her house. This is why she has no nightlife. Before we do this, we're going to take the temperature in degrees Celsius. So in addition to getting a beginning weight and an end weight, we need a beginning temperature of this and an end temperature of this. Thirty degrees. Oh, oh, thirty-one. There it goes. Look at the fun you're missing when doing the lab in person. I'm gonna let it rise for a minute. As that's rising, let's think about what are gonna be some of the ways that our homemade calorimeter is not as accurate as the bomb calorimeter. This is the part during the lab when I ask a question. There's an awkward silence. I won't tell you the answer, but I want you to start thinking about 
what are going to be some ways in which this is not as accurate. All right, we are at 33 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put initial temperature, 33 degrees Celsius. Ready to burn some stuff? I'm ready to burn some stuff. So we're going to pour this into the tomato paste can. And, wait a minute, this one has no holes in it, see? This one has no holes in it. We'll use this one. In science, there's always things you gotta adapt. We're gonna dangle this right over top the popcorn. Now actually, it's touching the popcorn, so I'm gonna have to adjust this. That piece of wire down. Let's try it again. Oh yeah! Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. If our trusty assistant comes around, come on around, we're gonna see a little porthole in the side of this. Can be rested on the table. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put this in the porthole and I'm gonna light the piece of popcorn on fire. Can you get a view of the top of it burning? Bring it up, bring it up. It is burning and it smells like burning popcorn. It smells like science, ladies and gentlemen. Could you go back around? Perfect. So what I want to do is, is after it's done burning, immediately after, I'm going to take this off and retake the temperature. You're going to notice when I put the thermometer in here, I don't want the thermometer to touch the bottom of the tomato paste can because that's going to increase the temperature abnormally. Let's let this go up a little bit. So far, it seems to have not gone up that much. Our initial temperature was 33 degrees Celsius. Now it's 34 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put in here 34 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to do a wait. So if I take this off, we're going to see what's left. I'll bring it over to you. That's what's left of the peanut piece, or the, the popcorn piece. I'm going to put it back on the scale. Let me first tear it with the weighing boat on there. Press the zero to tear it. Put this on there. Our initial weight was 0.22 grams. Our weight now is 0.2 grams. All right. Now we're going to pause for a second while we set up the remaining burning part. Okay, everyone, now we're back for the equations. This is a super close look at me. Whoa. So I gave you the data, and I'm going to give it to you in the next video, okay? In order to calculate, I'm going to do the popcorn as an example, and you're going to do the rest for the chip and the peanut. For the weight, you take the initial and the final, and you subtract. So our initial popcorn weight was 0.22 grams. Our final weight was 0.2 grams. So the difference 
is 0 0.02 grams. We do the same thing. We do the same thing for the temperature. It went from 33 to 34. So that's a plus one degree Celsius increase. Now we're going to plug these numbers into these equations. These are the same equations that are in your book. Okay? I'm just going to show you how to do it once and you do the rest. For the popcorn, we've got three equations for each piece of food. You're first going to do heat absorbed. In the lab book, it tells you take 100 mils times the temperature change. So for our popcorn, the temperature change was 1. So I will simply do 100 mils times 1 times 1 equals 100. Okay, so 100 mils times the temperature change times 1 equals 100. Now I'm going to do a number of nutritive calories. So I take the number of thermal calories, which is 100, and I divide by 1,000. You don't even need a calculator for this. If we were in lab and you used a calculator to do this, I would have something to say about it. Because all we have to do is move the decimal. So 100 divided by 1,000, I take the decimal over 1, 2, 3 times. So it would be 0 0.1. So our nutritive calories for the popcorn is 0.1. And like I talked about in the beginning of this series, the thermal calorie has a lowercase c, and the nutritive calorie has a capital C. The last calculation is amount of calories per gram. This is what we really care about, so I have it highlighted. We take the number of ther thermal calories, which is 100, divide by the difference in weight. What was the difference in weight for our popcorn? 0 0.02. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by 1,000. This one I will need the calculator for, but it won't take me very long. So I will do 100 divided by 0.2 equals, and then divide that by 1,000. 0.5 calories per gram. Let me just show you this. 0.5 calories per gram. So you do the same thing for the chip and the popcorn, and we'll see what happens.